of that year. And then uh, that led to a uh, contract with uh, Creator Syndicate to do a uh, newspaper uh, comic strip. So I did Liberty Meadows, a newspaper, comic syndicated newspaper comic strip for five years. And then uh, and I just quit because I just couldn't handle the, the censorship and the, the daily deadline. Uh, I just quit. I mean, I didn't, I had no backup plan. And then it turned out the, uh, um, one of the Marvel editors was a big fan of mine. And that was Axel Alonzo, who later became the editor in chief. So I actually lucked out. So he recruited me. So people asked me, how did you break into Marvel? I said, I just picked up the phone. Uh, Marvel, Axel called me. You know. um, <clears throat> so I didn't take any art lesson. I'm all completely self-taught. Uh, once you learn the anatomy, it's anatomy looks like it you, know, you can pretty much do whatever any other question do you walk us through a typical day do you have a studio or do you go to a studio to work so yeah I have a studio at my house so I wake up uh, crack of noon mm -hmm. uh, you know I go downstairs uh, my studio pretty much uh, half my house studio my entire main floor is my studio so I basically uh, start um, um, actually I don't work until night I'm a night owl so I go to my studio check my email and then um, just mess around on Facebook and the <laughs> internet you know uh, I don't have a dog anymore <laughs> shut in at this point so depending on if, if it's cold or hot you know, I don't even wear pants <laughs> so I just go downstairs and just kind of hang out and watch TV uh, actually it's, it's a great job I think about it. it's an absolutely fantastic job what do you watch? what's your favorite show? Um, I watch everything uh, um, I binge watch so lately, I've been watching Ozark, which is okay. a fantastic show. Um, <laughs> yes. Just finished watching Peacemaker. Do you like it? Yeah, I liked it. Okay. Uh, I haven't started on Ghost uh, Moonlight yet. Um, usually, when I draw, I, I turn on a lot of uh, like dramas, like talking dramas, like Law and Order. Um, <laughs> Like those eighties eighties show that I grew up with, like Magnum PI, Lord of the Rings, Quantum Leap, you know those shows. Um, and actually, I've been really uh, into uh, Ancient Aliens. Oh, that's my favorite. Fantastic. <laughs> you ever go to AlienCon? No, no. Actually, I'm, I kind of want to. It's really cool. Yeah. Yes. Very. Do they have it every year? Yes. Well, before COVID, yeah. Where is it? Is it like they travel like, all over, just like you know, like Comic Con. Okay, so like I've been to um, Anaheim and also in uh, Washington D.C. Okay, so like, uh, who are the guests? I mean, Giorgio is the the okay. aliens guy oh, and with yeah, the hair. Yeah, the yeah. Crazy hair. Then Eric Von Doniken. Oh, and he's still around. Yeah, he's still around. <laughs> yeah. So do like do they bring like actual alien? And no, no, like, it's it's actually it's stage? it's pretty interesting, and uh, a lot of them do. Like like tours and stuff like in like in, in Egypt and whatnot. So you could go on tours with these ancient alien nice. people. So are you from Maryland? Yeah. So I live in um, just south of Baltimore. We're from Annapolis. There you go. For okay. Arnold. Okay, so Annapolis is about twenty minutes, twenty five minutes. I live in uh, uh, Hanover. You know where mm -hmm. that is? I live in Hanover. Nice. Don't come around though. <laughs> <laughs> I did actually have a fan show up. A couple of fans show up at my house uh, oh, <laughs> unannounced, which was like really awkward. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 
So I have like door pants, I put on them right next to my door. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to answer, you know, I have to put on my pants, you know. <laughs> well, at least this one's close to you, short drive. Actually, it took the train, it was like an hour and a half train ride, yeah. so it wasn't that bad. So how did you teach yourself anatomy? Um, I always drew as a kid. Um, I learned to draw by copying other uh, artists. And lucky for me, I the artists, all the artists that I love drawing, you know, you know uh, collecting comics and uh, like uh, trying to copy, emulate what, how they drew was like they're all classically trained. So you have uh, uh, John Buscema was a huge influence on me. Uh, uh, Jose Garcia Lopez was another big guy. Uh, Don Newton, which no one knows about. Don Newton was a Batman artist back in the 80s. Uh, was a really great Batman artist. Um, Neil Adams, uh, Al Weaveson, Frank Frazetta, all those guys. And then, uh, and the thing is, like, you, I kind of outgrew the comics and started looking at uh, basically self taught how to. Uh, Draw and paint by looking at classical fine artists, you know, from like, uh, so yeah, I basically just taught myself about the whole art history from uh, Renaissance on, you know. Um, and then, so actually, some of my favorite painters are like really <coughs> classically trained, uh, uh, like legit painters like Rubens, Van Dyke, Sargent, um, all those guys, though. Question also on um, all your um, high amount of fine line work on on the fine art covers that you do. It reminds me of Alfredo Alcala. Have you ever seen his Voltar book? Yeah. So uh, Alcala was uh, that style was influenced by Franklin Booth. Franklin Booth was a uh, American illustrator from the 1910s, 19 you know around that uh, around World War One era. Uh, so. Alcala was, was emulating that. Uh, Franklin Booth also influenced Bernie Bryson, so uh, Franklin style. So when you see all those line work, that's all Franklin Booth. Um, <laughs> and uh, so actually right now, I'm currently working on a Sherlock Holmes uh, uh, novel. So Harper Collins hired me to illustrate one of their Sherlock Holmes novel. And I've been uh, um, working on that. Actually, I should be working on that right now. <laughs> <laughs> You know, get a little cabin fever and you need to go out. When is the Holmes novel due out? Let's see, the deadline is May. Of May. I think the book's supposed to come out sometime in the fall, I think, like October. October, November, around that time. So the the, uh, the the Sherlock Holmes stuff that is it's going to be in the Franklin Booth style for all the very all the all the line work. So I love Franklin Booth. Uh, I don't like any of my drawings. <laughs> <laughs> I see nothing but mistakes in it. So. get up around like noon, <laughs> one o'clock, uh, and then I go to bed at like six in the morning. 
So I, I usually work from like 10 at night till about six in the, six in the morning. So before, my brain doesn't wake up until the sun goes down. Yes, I finished writing and drawing uh, Fight Girls, so uh, AWA Studios, they're shopping around to get an option for a movie or TV, and they're gonna, we're uh, supposed to uh, start working on a second book for them uh, called Russian Red. It's a horror book. It's a horror, uh, action horror. Mm -hmm. It's a story of a, a, a vampire, uh, uh, Russian vampires taking over uh, Do you have a favorite superhero yourself? It's not Superman. <laughs> uh, my favorite superhero is Spider-Man. I've always liked Spider-Man. I don't know why. Uh, because like, I've always thought, well, it's just the writing. I mean, it's, when I was growing up, Spider-Man was just it was just fun because Spider-Man was just a, just an average guy. He had the exact same problems that I did, you know, trying to pay rent. <laughs> so, you know, he had money issues, just a lot of, you know, a lot of different stuff. Because, um, like, so I, I was a Marvel guy growing up. I read nothing but Marvel books growing up because Marvel, to me, kind of spoke to me. Um, they were, like, really, the characters were relatable. Unlike DC, you have Superman, who is essentially a god. Nothing can hurt him. So they bored me to tears. And the only DC book that I read was uh, the New Teen Titans by uh, Perez and uh, and uh, what's his name? Wolverine. Well, yeah, exactly, Wolverine. And there were ex Marvel guys. You enjoy it. Sorry, yeah. Sorry. No, yeah. If you discount money, like take money out of the equation, what would you like to work on, like at any given project? What do you mean? Uh, well, what, assuming the pay was the same for everything, like would you like to work on, uh, you know, uh, any specific characters you haven't already worked on, or any specific stories, like uh, John Carter from Mars, or um, I don't know, the Saints or, or Care Bears, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So when I was at Marvel, uh, I really wanted to work on Conan, and, but they didn't have the Conan license at that time, so this was 2003. So they let the Conan license go in the mid-90s, I think, and then so Dark Horse had it for about 10 years. And so that was during that time Dark Horse had it, so uh, I really wanted because I grew up reading Savage Sword Conan magazine, you know, and um, and um, so they didn't have Conan, which really sucked. Um, so I, the two books that I really wanted to try Marvel was Conan was one. Second one was Fantastic Four because I was a big Fantastic Four fan, uh, John Byrne's Fantastic Four fan from the eighties. So, because the way I drew, um, even though Marvel hired me as a writer artist, they start just giving me nothing but art uh, chores, uh, which is fine. I mean, it's you know pretty fairly easy to do and all that. Um, but I really did want to write uh, some of their bigger titles, but they didn't um, trust me with it, which is kind of odd. Uh, and also, this is during the. Bendis era, so Bendis and some of the bigger writers, that they basically would earmark the different characters for them to write. And if you're like the up and coming writers, you can't touch those characters, which was very frustrating. Um, 
So it's basically Brenda's equivalent equivalent of licking the food, you know. <laughs> um, but eventually, I did uh, actually did give me a chance to write Savage Wolverine. Uh, so you guys remember that the, the, it was a Savage Wolverine. Uh, Wolverine and Shauna team up. So that was fun. And then when uh, Disney bought out Marvel, they pretty much got rid of all the uh, exclusive uh, creators like me. I got let their contract lapse, and then uh, DC snap, snatched me up. And then I was supposed to do Wonder Woman. Uh, um, I wanted to write and draw Wonder Woman, but um, Ruck, I think it was Ruck up, Greg Ruck up, and then I didn't want to do anything to do with it. And then so they offered me to, if, if Greg Rucka writes it, do you want to draw it? And I said no, because, uh, because I, just, you know, I just didn't like Rucka. <laughs> uh, and then, so they had me drawing the covers, and then I guess the feeling was mutual, so Rucka basically got me kicked out of the cover duties, which is fine. Uh, and then I ended up doing a Harley Quinn cover. So I did have a Wonder Woman story in mind that I wanted to do. And uh, it's actually pretty funny because I actually saw Dan DeDio, the, edit, the, the publisher, after he got let go from DC Comics. And uh, let me think. Sorry, that was my drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do drugs. <laughs> Slapping me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't do drugs. This message is sponsored by Pfizer. Right. Right. So. And Will Smith. <laughs> so I had uh, um, lunch with uh, Dan DeDio at, at a show at one of these uh, conventions. And then he asked me, he said, Why didn't you, uh, uh, what happened to your Wonder Woman story? Because I pitched it to him. And I thought he didn't like it. And so I said, and he goes, what do you mean? I, you didn't, I thought you didn't like it. He said, no, I loved it. <laughs> I was waiting for, you know, the formal proposal, you know, the, the, you know, the synopsis and the character design and all that stuff. And I was like, hell, why don't you tell me? You know? <laughs> I've been done that and I've you know, worked on Wonder Woman. And so, so I'm just saving that and, you know, putting that in my back, uh, back pocket. And also, I have like a, my, one of my favorite DC character was Lobo. Oh. So I have a Lobo story in mind that I want to write and draw. But at this point, I mean, it's, it's just why give it to DC when I can just just change a few things and make it my own creator, own character, and then mm. keep all the money. Mm. So, so that's what I'm actually kind of like thinking about now. But the big character that I really wanted to draw at DC was uh, Swamp Thing. I'm a big horror guy, and uh, and I was a huge fan of uh, Bernie Wrightson's Swamp Thing, and also a big fan of Alan Moore's Swamp Thing story uh, when he uh, you know revised it in the '80s. And I thought Alan Moore's Swamp Thing, his stories were just absolutely incredible. But I love Bernie Wrightson's uh, art in the Swamp Thing, so I wanted to kind of like marry the two. Did you see the show, Swamp Thing? No, no, I haven't. Is it good? Not so much. What? Oh, you didn't like it? Yeah. No so, way. Yeah. What was wrong with it? I, I just thought it was a little cheesy. A little cheesy? A little cheesy. Stop, I think it's good. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Actually, I didn't finish it, though. Yeah. <laughs> when Bernie Wrightson I'm sorry. passed away <laughs> before finishing <laughs> Frankenstein Alive Alive, the job got open to and Tully Jones, but did you pitch for that, or? No, I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> For a character like Venom that's all black, how do you balance um, like 
not just like putting the whole thing in shadow without you know making it not look dark enough. Uh, it's I look at it. you know how the bodybuilders how they get really tan and then <laughs> they oil themselves up. So you think of the bodybuilders and trying to figure out where the shadow falls in them. That's what that's how you do it. study anatomy way before nursing school because of you know art. Um, so when I went to nursing school, I, I just aced it, you know, the anatomy <laughs> part anyway. Um, no, I mean like the only uh, gore that I saw in nursing was when I did my surgical rotation and it was just more as a student nurse, you just stand in the corner, watch the surgery, you know, and all that. And let me tell you, the human body is freaky. Uh, <laughs> And so I thought if I was going to be a, if I couldn't make it as an artist, I was going to be a uh, surgical nurse because it is just crazy. Just, um, just, the, just what the human, inside the human is like, is, is why. But you need to have a strong stomach. I mean, nursing didn't really help me, but it didn't hurt, you know, looking at that. Any other questions? On, on the horror angle of things, what is your preferred like, type of horror movie or your favorites? Ah, uh, man. I mean, it, it has to be well done. <laughs> I mean, I could even go to the pool. I mean, after I saw Jaws. Um, yeah, what were our parents thinking? Let us watch five years old. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I grew up in the seventies and eighties, and you know, parents are like, ah. Uh, <laughs> as long as you're quiet. I mean, literally, they would. Uh, I would. I remember I would go out with my friends, you know, on Saturdays finish watching the cartoons, have lunch, and then we'll, all my friends will just go bike riding into the creek. And we didn't come home until the sun came down. You know, when the sun went down, that's when my parents were, you know, for, but we'll be gone for like six, seven hours, you know, just riding a bike, you know, playing in the creek. You can't do that anymore now, you know. Everyone's all glued to their iPhones. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a part. Um, yeah, so the horror book that, uh, that I'm doing, Russian Red, uh, it's going to be more uh, like action in it. And I, I guess a lot of nowadays it's all about mood and, you know, it's more like suspense. And I kind of like the action, you know, like the, what's this one? Uh, so, so I'm a product of the Like 
feeling it's a second movie more than the first. Um, with James Cameron. So actually, I, I, I think about that. James Cameron and I have very similar tastes. Because <laughs> all the movies that he's done, I really enjoy, you know, Aliens, uh, Terminator, um, Abyss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I thought it was all nicely done. Um, yeah. Was, uh, Avatar. Avatar I thought was fun. I mean, they want to make fun of it. Like I said, with wolves, but wolves don't no smurfs. Uh, but I thought it was nicely done. So on, on any of these movies, when you were a kid, did you watch Flight of the Navigator and the Explorer? Just I did, but I didn't really care for it. I, I wanted more action, so I. I'm a big, huge Indiana Jones fan, so Indiana Jones. Have you gotten any comments, positive or negative, from people in Marvel or DC regarding your sketch covers, like of our outrage and... Um, I mean, like... Individually, I mean, they all liked it, but that's, uh, they just ignored me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I mean, that's kind of like a seal of approval. I mean, they're being yeah. quiet about it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, everyone seemed to like it. Oh, yeah, I didn't mean the corporation, I meant, you know, individuals. No, I mean, like, yeah, everyone, all my friends, I mean, we're all friends, it's a very small pond, so everyone knows each other. So if there's any problem, you don't know about it, but I haven't heard anything, you know. Are you doing any work with like NFTs in the metaverse, stuff like that? No, I have no idea what that is. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, I, they explained it to me, and I'm like, oh, so it's a digital copy. So, okay, so how do you own that? I mean, it's just, you make another copy of it, you know? And they're like, no, it's a blockchain, they try to explain the blockchain, and I'm like, oh, that makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, I'm an old-fashioned guy. I mean, if I'm going to own an original art, it's something tangible that to hold in my hand, you know. Do you still practice, like, life drawing, stuff like that? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, the last time I did life drawing was, it's been a while. I mean, I do pose myself, so, People ask me if I use reference, I say, yeah, I use reference all the time. Um, yes and no, you know, this I'm not using reference for, you know. So, so some of the like really detailed stuff that I need reference for, I use reference. But usually I can't find reference. I mean, how do you find a reference for like, a, you know, like the, um, the monster, you know, uh, fighting, you know, uh, like, a, like a naked woman, you know. <laughs> and, and the funny thing is, I end up posing myself for both sexes. <laughs> because like the anatomy is essentially the same. You, know, you just have to just make different parts bigger, you know. <laughs> uh, so it's actually pretty funny. I mean like uh, I have a I have a big mirror in, you know in my house so I would like end up like on the front of the mirror like posing like this and it's mm -hmm. people think I'm having a stroke. But yeah, um, you know, uh, at conventions, sometimes uh, people will come up for jam pieces, you know, like with you doing one figure and another artist doing another. Is there any, like, jam book? Like, if, like, if you, would you like to work with any, like, who would you like to work with on a, like, co-drawn book? What do you mean, like? Yeah, like, like, would you like to work with Alex Ross, or would you like to work with, well, obviously, you write something that's um, not available, uh, but. Well, pretty much all the guys that I want to work with are dead. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, I mean, there isn't anyone that I would want to work with. No, I think 
take that back. I, I actually once worked with uh, um, Simon Bisley because I was going to, I was going to pitch the logo idea to DC uh, if Simon Bisley was attached to it because um, I, you know, uh, I I write as I draw, so I was going to just draw and pencil it and have Simon uh, ink it because uh, Simon was brilliant back in the. Uh, So, um, but it still had that power behind it. And I was gonna, you know, so I approach uh, Simon about collaborating where I'll pencil it and he basically finish it. So I just lay it out and, you know, do a rough layout and, you know, get all the proportion right and then ha have him finish it. And, ooh, he did not, he did not like that idea. <laughs> so, what's that saying goes? Never meet your heroes? <laughs> Never meet your heroes. Have you ever been to the Hermitage? No, no. It's a little be difficult now, but. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's in Russia, right? Yeah, St. Petersburg, but Saint Petersburg. It, it's gorgeous. Actually, you know what's, what's small but very good is the Frank Rosetta Museum at the suburb near, near where I live in Strasbourg, Pennsylvania. So I, I went there when Frank was still alive. Uh, I never met him, um, but uh, his wife, uh, Ellie, gave me a tour. Fortunately now, uh, with his passing, uh, all the artwork got split up, mm -hmm. and most of the kids sold off the paintings, you know. And so, um, the Frazetta Museum of the PA uh, is not what once it was. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very small handful of paintings and prints, exactly, you know. Actually, I went to the one in, uh, uh, in Florida the second Frazetta Museum, and that's actually pretty good um, because it's a lot more intimate, you know? Actually, being a child of the 80s and, you know, you horror, et cetera, and adventure and Conan, would you ever want to do like a, a He-Man and the Masters of the Universe book? Ah, uh, man, I, I love He-Man growing up, but you know, it's, it's, there's so much, I mean, as you, when you, you know how certain things that doesn't age well? <laughs> he man is one of them. I, mean, I love he man growing up, and then as you like think about it more, a lot of it just didn't make any sense. <laughs> you know, he man and the 
Terrence Adam look exactly the same, yeah. <laughs> but no one can tell, you know, like a classy man. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, Lindsay Sterling did something similar. She's a very good like classical violinist. I mean, she's filled halls and high ticket prices. She went down to New, to New York City subway, just started playing the violin. Everybody's walking right by her. Uh, I, I mean, like, I guess you, you have to be a fan, you know? Um, I mean, thank God I'm not, I'm not like, well-known like those guys. Never been in that situation where people would recognize me in the wild, you know, so to speak. No, actually, not take that back. I was, uh, no, this was at Comic Con. It was, so I was at Comic Con. I was in the bathroom, uh -oh. using the bathroom. <laughs> and a guy in the next urinal <laughs> basically turns to me and goes, Oh my God, you're Frank Cho. <laughs> And I'm like, I am not shaking your hands, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so he wanted my autograph. And I'm like, dude, this is the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never approach another man at a bathroom, you know? So the most of my women are just just based on Linda Carter. I love Linda Carter. You know, she was like the the woman for me growing up. And I discovered her like in first grade when Wonder Woman TV show was on, and then just like something about it just that became the template for all my women. You know. I am like, you know, I'm like thinking, this shoulder is messed up. This doesn't look right, you know. This hand doesn't look right. Um, I should do something different with the hand. I'm not raising it. Um, yeah, it, it really sucks to be in my head. And you can talk about like, you know, like uh, low self-esteem is just it's hypercritical. <laughs> How do you know when something's finished? Well, most of the time, something isn't finished. It, it just, I just give up. <laughs> what's, what's the saying goes? Like, uh, hard work hard isn't finished, it's abandoned. You know? Well, I'm pretty sure we all think that you're doing an awesome job. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Makes you feel any better. <laughs> I'm blown away you're talking to us as you're doing this. Yeah. Having whole conversations and stuff. That's crazy. Study anatomy, draw from life, um, and keep drawing every day. No, 
and so this is kind of messed up. I, I don't like this arm. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're like, oh no. What are you proud of the most out of your all your work? I'm not proud of the most. Yeah. Uh, I guess my Harley Quinn covers because I did like over about eighty of them. There's a certain consistent quality to them, you know, because usually, and most of them are, um, I'm not quite happy about, but I'm not too bad, you know, I don't feel too negative about. I noticed the name Mike McSwiggin in the uh, Fight Girls book. Are you still friends? <laughs> Actually, the guy who called me, that was Mike McSwiggin. <laughs> so Mike McSwiggin is my best friend. So, uh, so he and I, we went to the same school. Uh, he went to pharmacy school and I went to nursing school. And uh, so his room, so he was dating, uh, his, the, the girl that he was dating was, uh, the roommate was my girlfriend. So, so that's how we met through our uh, ex-girlfriend. And, uh, and Mike was just basically, you know, like me. You know, we're just a couple of uh, kids from the 80s, you know, and he was a big comic guy, big comic movie guy. And, uh, and so we just connected. And so when he, uh, when Jamie, his girlfriend, dumped him, uh, Mike and I, we stayed together. <laughs> uh, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, or like, or, or what do they think then, and what do they think now? Or, well, I mean, uh, coming from a typical Korean family, Asian family, uh, my parents pushed me hard to become a doctor. Um, that's why I went to nursing school. Uh, because you know, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to go to medical school because it's just too long. And so they were they were not happy that I was pursuing art. And and I guess in their uh, in their lack of support for me pursuing art, in a way kind of supported me, you know, because there's a you know, like when someone tells you you can't do something, it kinda put that fire in your engine to prove them wrong. So that's what happened. I mean, so my parents, for the longest time, in my well into my thirties, uh, kept telling me that I should get a real job at the hospital, use my nursing degree, and get a real job at the hospital. Uh, meanwhile, I was a syndicated cartoonist and um, making decent money. And uh, so they only stopped when I bought my first house, and then that's when they realized. Oh, you actually can earn a decent money with it, you know. And um, and also, uh, my mom's coworker uh, was a fan of mine, and so when she found out that uh, my mom was uh, was the mother of you know of, of, of mine, whatever, she asked my mom. So yeah, so I, you know, so I don't, yeah, I didn't get any support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, now they're proud of me and they brag about, you know, they brag about me. 
brag about me all the time, but you know, I'm not starting out. I actually wanted to even establish myself. They wanted me to get a real job at the hospital, use my nursing degree. So, yeah, the, the whole Korean culture, Asian culture, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks. Will this be available for sale? This? Yeah. What, this bed? Yes. No, I'm going to give it to one of the kids. Okay. I'm going to ask for it. Oh, what's this up? You can buy it off her. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I have a couple of kids here. I know. Thank you. So. Uh, they invite me back. I don't know why they haven't invited me back. Are you going to do more stuff on YouTube anytime soon? Well, so, the problem is, I want to do more stuff, but I don't know how, I'm, I'm like one of the few Asians who don't know technology. <laughs> so, I don't know how to convert the, uh, to get a really high end, you know, uh, camera and the setup and all that. So I have a friend of mine who's supposed to, who does, who does commercials, he's supposed to come in, uh, give me a list of all the cameras and equipment and all that and uh, and set up my studio so I can actually film what I do uh, but he hasn't done that yet so and also like you're it, it's pretty busy I mean I'm, I'm pretty busy and so it's it is a bit of a hassle because you have to like you know stop drawing to adjust the camera and all that you know Yeah, but just, mention, just mentioning film and all, would you ever want to do like an animated film? Like, you know, the, the, uh, Frank presented his fire and ice and... Actually. <laughs> so, uh, Bike Girl was about to, uh, we were, um, we were about to get an uh, option um, for, there was a studio that was really want to work with me to get it developed into a, uh, a movie uh, uh, or a TV show for Netflix. And I said no, because um, they were going to do essentially rotoscope, uh, like the Frazetta, you know, Fire and Ice. And I hate rotoscope. Uh, I've always saw, um, uh, I've always seen uh, Fight Girls as a uh, as a movie or a TV show, live action TV show. Uh, so I really don't want to see any of my, it's at the Liberty Meadows, I really don't want to see any of my uh, comic book stuff turn into a, a, a cartoon, you know? So, I, you know, because I've always envisioned it as a uh, live action movie. So that's what I do when I write and draw a comic. Um, I picture it as a uh, movie in my mind. So yeah, so we got out of that, uh, um, that you know, that, that partnership, and it all comes from anatomy drawing. What's it been like being fairly well known? <laughs> no, I mean, it's, no, I mean, it's, there's, I mean, outside of very few people, no one knows who I am, and so it's, 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 it's nice, I mean, you know, get to go to conventions and, um, and, you know, mingle with the crowd and all, and no one will recognize me, so that's fine. Ever uh, look at yourself up? Actually, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I uh, when my Instagram hit like uh, four hundred thousand or something like that, um, uh, or three hundred thousand. Uh, my daughter was looking me up and said, and there's a blue check mark, Ooh. and then she says, she goes, Dad, you're famous. I'm like, 
what do you mean? If you have a blue check mark, I said, like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> that means you're certified famous. And I'm like, really? I don't feel famous. So we were, we were in a, a Chick fil A eating chicken. <laughs> so I'm like eating my chicken. I don't feel famous. <laughs> so, so people ask me, how does it feel famous? I'm not famous. <laughs> Killing me. Oh. <laughs> you touch us over. Both my girls inherited my art talent, and they're doing nothing with it. Oh. They're not. Both are not even comic fans, and I, I expose them to comics at an early age. Try to get them to read comic. No, I guess because I pushed it to them, they want nothing to do with it, and so and it's, it's it's killing me because like they have my talent. I see it when they draw for fun, and I'm like all right, you have it. You could be, just work on it. By the time you hit adulthood, you could work as a professional. Nope, they don't want anything. I think my youngest wants to be a, uh, I think she wants to be like an animal doctor, uh, like a vet or something like that. And I think my uh, oldest, she wants to be a, uh, I don't know what she wants to be. <laughs> so this is driving me nuts. I'm like, going, you guys have my talent. I mean, I, this is like a gift. Maybe. No? Have your daughters stay with your parents for a while? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Some of you think you're fine. Am I the. Is it over? It's over when you say it's over. with them called Madam 44 and <laughs> and, uh, and Frank wanted so it was supposed to be uh, DC hired me to go in where Frank was supposed to write it and I'm supposed to draw it and it's supposed to be a revamp of old western character and, uh, and DC Comics want Dan to be the one to update it to the 1930s like this looks like a uh, film noir kind of like Sin City. So they hired me and, and Frank wanted to keep it as a Western. So, so DC Comics flew me to New York City uh, to work with Frank for about four days uh, to, to hash out this story. Uh, this was in 2017, um, 2017, 2018, around there. And out the story and he he wrote all three <laughs> it's like he one of them is like a novelette uh, like a novella he wrote that which I'm actually working on right now uh, World of Pain and then he wrote Autumn which was a side uh, fantasy kind of World of Rain thing and, and I did the character design for that and then the third one is Orwich, which is a horror uh, fantasy. So he wrote all three, and it's just sitting on my shelf, and I'm just, and so he's just driving him nuts. And I feel bad, I mean, I actually talked to him like uh, three days ago, and I apologized, and I said, hey, it's gonna get done. And then I checked my calendar, and I said, holy crap, he wrote World of Pain, gave me the, the script 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, 
So I, I just said, you know what, I'm gonna do one page at a time, just, you know, just crack at it. So, and then his agent was asking him, said, why is the world pain? So you've been waiting on it for like eight years. Oh my God. You know? Because uh, you can like pitch it to a, a studio. So again, I got way too many work, you know? So that's why, I mean, I don't know why I'm working with a lot of people because I got too much. So I'm working on Sherlock, but that's a big passion project of mine that I'm working on right now. Am I done? So any one last question? Any? You have a booth here? I have a booth, yeah. It's uh, at the back of the convention. I'm with the comic sketch art okay, cool. uh, booth. I am right by Mark Silvestri. So uh, I'm actually going to go to my hotel room right after this. I'm going to go take a nap. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, but I will be what? tomorrow, Sunday, I will be at my booth at 10 o'clock in the morning. See you tomorrow. <laughs> yes, yes. Again, don't grow old. I mean, it's still in Canada, so. That's pretty cool. Uh, what's today's date? April 9th. April 9th? Yeah. You've got a nice handwriting. <laughs> Thank you.